Hello again and welcome to another tutorial on using Boris Red in EDIUS. In this tutorial I'm going to look at the use of motion trackers in Boris Red. The tutorial is not going to deal with specific ways of using the motion tracker but how to actually set up the tracker and tweak the results of the tracking when necessary so that I can concentrate on the actual tracker instead of using a regular video clip I have created these two special clips the first one is the white dot which moves across the grey screen and changes direction a few times the second one is actually the same dot on the same grey screen but halfway through the playback you'll see that the dot makes an extremely large jump between frames. Here's the first one. Quite regular movement. And the second one, watch. Did you see a jump there? Beginning with the green clip, I go to the effect palette. And in the video filters, I find the Boris Red filter and drop it onto the video track. Then I launch Boris Red. Here in Boris Red, I will deselect the video track by clicking in the empty space here. I'll go up to filters, down to motion, and down to motion tracker. The motion tracker shape track opens and the controls for the motion tracker open. To work with the motion tracker, I need to open a motion tracker window, and I do that by going down to the TV icon here and click. Now you can see the motion tracker window has opened, and here is a single motion tracker. Grab the crosshair and drag your motion tracker down to the object you want to track. Make sure that your cursor is at the beginning of the timeline when you're doing this and in my case I like to make sure this key is turned off if you have a red background here please click on the key so that it turns to grey go to this green rectangle with the crosshair the analyze motion tracker button and click and you'll see the motion tracking takes place Once the tracking has finished, go back to your video track. Now I need an object to which I can attach the tracker. And in the examples in this tutorial, I'm going to use a very simple object. Deselect here. I'm going to choose Add Vector Text. And as it's a tracker, we'll call this T. Then I'll go to the Text Shape Track, Twiddle up the Shape Track. Grab the Motion Tracker Shape Track and pull it up and drop it onto the Text Shape Track. Release. If I play now, you'll see the text moves along with the dot, but probably I don't want the text to be so far away from the dot. So with the Text Shape Track selected, drag the text down to the position you'd like it to be when the tracking starts and now you see that it's moving along with the dot. Depending on the power of your computer you may find that using control zero to play back to RAM will give you a reasonable preview. Now I can apply this and back in EDIUS I can check and see that it's working. Again, if your computer is up to it, you can preview this. Otherwise, it's just as well to render this as soon as possible. So that's the simple tracking, the one that works. I'm now going to track the second clip and show you what happens when it doesn't work. Drag Boris Red filter down onto the video track and launch Boris Red. And in red again, make sure your cursor is at the beginning of your timeline. Deselect the video track, filters, motion, motion tracker. Click on the TV icon. 
drag the crosshair so you put this down onto the object to be tracked and then click on the analyze motion tracker and you'll see that when it gets to the jump it loses contact and goes shooting off in the wrong direction so we're going to look at how we can correct this now you can move frame by frame through the timeline by using the page up and the page down keys if i press page down you can see the green rectangles by the way i should stop here and just mention that on the tracker there are two rectangles as you have noticed the inner rectangle is known as the target area and should be resized to fit as closely as possible to the object you want to track the object you want to track should if possible be visible on all frames and the contrast between it and the surroundings should make it stand out clearly the outer rectangle is known as the search area and this is the area in which the tracker will search for the object this is where we have a problem let's continue moving forwards here and you'll see when i reach this frame this is the one before the jump everything is fine and the search area has been working up till now but when i go to the next frame you can see the search area can't find that dot there are a couple of different ways of getting over this problem and i'm going to show you the one i prefer using and it's based on the fact that you can keyframe the tracker so that it will appear at a certain position on a certain frame here's how i go about it let's go back to the start of the timeline you won't find any parameters available for the center crosshair but you can find parameters for the target area and for the search area these numbers specify the position of the sides of the rectangles the problem is that all of these are set by default to constant in other words you're not going to be able to set keyframes unless you change the interpolation from constant to hold so i'll change all of these to hold and i'm going to explain the method i'm using later in the tutorial now that i've changed everything to hold i can once again scrub through the timeline and i want to go to the frame where the tracker has lost contact i want to set a keyframe here so control n now i have a keyframe here so i can start changing the position of the tracker at the start the crosshair of the tracker is over the small rectangle marking this frame so when you left click and drag you may get the tracker to follow along or like what's happening here you end up getting that keyframe don't worry just release it and go back here and try again to get the cross here now i can place this in position and i need to put this back where it was at the start so if we go back here and i go one frame forwards one frame forwards you'll see now my tracker at this frame has jumped to here so it will continue tracking from here let's see what happens when we actually press the analyze motion tracker there it goes and then jump and it's tracking correctly now the old track points are disappearing and being replaced by these new ones so now I can magically make my text track appear again and drag the tracker onto the text shape track go back to Edius and when we follow this you'll see that it jumps with the dot and in the second half now I'd like to take a look at some of the things 
that can go wrong or at least seem to go wrong and how you correct them. With the video track deselected, filters, motion, motion tracker, click on the TV icon. And here it's possible you can meet the first problem. When you come to the point of having to move the motion tracker down to the object to be tracked, and you grab the crosshair here and then begin to drag, you may find that it doesn't follow. If this happens, go to Preview and go down to OpenGL mode and you may find that you have OpenGL turned on. Turn it off and try again. Now you can do it. When you are placing the crosshair, it may be difficult to see exactly where you're putting it. Over here, under Region Zoom, you can switch on Zoom and it will zoom in on the target area. Now I can position this a little more accurately. I can also resize this while I'm here. And then when you're done, you can switch off the zoom again. Now here we are, ready. Drag the motion tracker shape track onto the text shape track. Then I position this, for example, down here. And I think let's preview this to RAM, control zero. And the dot goes off, but the text remains stationary. What is wrong? If we go to the motion tracker shape track and look under apply, you'll see that it's not going to be applied to any of the motion tracker's parameters. So you need to click on the triangle and choose Position. Then when you play back to RAM, everything works again. When you're at this stage, before you have applied the motion tracker to the object's track, and maybe here you'll think, let's change this already to position and when you come here you'll find that apply to is grayed out you can't change anything the reason is quite simple it's because the motion tracker is not associated with any object yet once I drag this into the text track you'll see up there that now I can choose position One final tip, and this one can be a lifesaver, especially if you have a video clip in which the contrast isn't really great enough for the tracker to be able to follow the object. In my example here, there's no problem, but let's say the, the grayness here was much closer to the white, and maybe the tracker kept losing contact with the dot. Now, if I was going to try and be clever, which I unfortunately sometimes do, I would select the video track, go up to Filters, Colors and Blurs, and put on the Brightness Contrast filter, and then adjust the contrast like this. So I have a nice black background with a nice white dot, a very, very good object for tracking. Unfortunately, if I continue now, here's the video track, deselect it, and I go to Filters, Motion, Motion Tracker, and then I click on the icon to open the Tracker window. I've lost the effect of the Contrast filter, and the reason is because the V1 track, which this refers to, is the V1 track I have on the EDIUS timeline at the moment. 
And on the timeline at the moment, this is how the contrast looks. So I'm going to remove this, and I'll also remove the brightness contrast filter. I'm going to go back to Edius, to this track, and under the video filters, I'll go up to the color correction filters, and uh, let's just take color balance, drag it down onto the track, and before I open the color balance, it's important that I have the color balance above the Boris Red button. So I need to drag this up, open the color balance, and uh, pull up the contrast. OK, now open Boris Red, and I have a nice contrasting picture, and then I can go through the procedure of tracking and adding the text track. So there we are, ready. Apply this and go back to Edius. See it's working. But my clip still has the very drastic contrast. So I can either just switch it off or chuck it in the trash can. And there I have my letter attached to the dot. Earlier on in this tutorial, I promised to come back and show you how I changed the interpolation of these eight boxes from constant to hold by just clicking on each one. The normal procedure would have been to click and then select the interpolation I wanted. However, if you've watched part one in this series, you'll probably remember that I suggested that in the options tab, under keyframe that you should set the default and the toggle interpolation to hold and it's this toggle interpolation function that I used earlier in the tutorial. If I go back to the timeline and I go up here again, if I hold down Alt when I click on this it will toggle to hold and likewise here, 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 here here and here. That's how you do it. Set the toggle interpolation, hold down Alt when you want to use it, and click. And back to the reality of the tutorial. And with that, I come to the end of this short and hopefully informative tutorial on the basic use of Boris Red's motion tracker in EDIUS. Bye for now.